There was a, a double murder in Louth. Uh, a poor uh, boy, young boy and a young woman got murdered, stabbed to death. I was off that day um, and ultimately uh, the jungle drums through our work uh, we get told what's going on roughly. So yeah, I got told that it happened and then obviously it was so it was on media as well. My partner, uh, Melanie Ash, she was on response at the time. She'd gone to work that night. Melanie was on nights. She's come in off nights and obviously needs some sleep. We've got two dogs, Zara and Cooper. Uh, I've uh, decided I'm gonna take the dogs for a walk um, and stay out for quite a few hours so that it gives time for Melanie to rest. Um, so we took the dogs for a walk. So I decided that I would come into Hubbard's Hills um, and go for a little bit longer and use the back playing field to throw the ball for the dog because he's mad for the ball. So as I come through the car park, um, I come through the gate and actually where we are stood now is where I first saw a figure with a hood up, his hands in his pockets and there was an elderly female in front of him. He was staring at this female. She was throwing a ball for her dog back towards the direction I was travelling. At that minute, you know the butterflies start in your stomach and I knew straight away this was the subject we were looking for. And uh, Cooper and Zorro were just doing their usual thing, having a look round, Zorro wanting to jump in the water. Um, and I'm thinking, as I'm closing him down, something is going to happen. So I've made that decision then, I'm going to take action. And subsequently, I've dropped the dog leads as I've sort of got level with him. I've spun on him, I've grabbed hold of him and we've gone onto the bench. At that point, I've said, I'm a police officer, Daniel, stay where you are, give me your hand, show me your hands, blah, blah, blah. Um, he didn't do that. There's arms going all over, kicks going in, at which point then he decided to, to leg it further into the park. I'm quite a stocky lad and I would say I'm strong, but he was wiry, very muscular um, and he was strong. Yeah, I thought he posed a proper threat to me. He was potentially stronger than me at that time. Um, but it's down to determination. So he started to run off further into Hubbard's Hills. So I've rung the last call that I had, which was another officer that I worked with on the ARV, who I knew was on overtime that day uh, in this area and would be able to trans, uh, to send the message across over the radio to get the uh, firearms teams down to the location. So then a member of the public has seen me, I've shouted something, off the top of my head, I can't remember, it was something like stay away or something along them lines, but he's gone to get hold of Daniel, uh, at which point Daniel's produced a knife uh, from his pocket. And you can see the member of the public, bear in mind he's a little distance ahead of me, I'm getting old. Um, he's pulled the knife, the member of the public's backed off. Um, I've kept updating um, my colleague about what is going on and continued the foot chase as he's gone past the member of the public at which point he stops he turns around and that's when i first saw the knife the knife i'd describe as an everyday kitchen knife um i don't I, I, it was a short blade uh, probably three four inches long in his right hand he's looked at me as though something's going to happen i've stopped and started to back off a little bit again keeping the update going to my colleague who is then updating the firearms teams. He's tried to stab me in the torso several times. I've punched him several times, at which point he's, he's managed to stab me in the left leg at the top of the thigh. I pushed him off, he's then decided he's not getting anywhere and he's begun to run off again with the knife still in his hand. I did a quick pat check to make sure there was no catastrophic bleeding. There was no blood on my hands. So I pulled my trousers back up and then I've started chasing him. Uh, we're just about to enter into another wooded area which is on the top of the bank as I've seen uh, firearms teams uh, arriving. Uh, they've given chase, he's gone along the top of the wood, uh, at which point I've then decided we need to get people out of the park, get them back safe out of the park. I've started shouting at members of the public to get out, go, you know, go back to your car, leave the park. Then I hear a scream and I've looked up the road and Daniel Bolton's come from the uh, grass area and tried to steal a car, or tried to rob a woman to steal a car, at which point I've set off running again up the road, but then realised literally seconds later, the firearms teams have come out of the uh, wooded area as well, and they've continued the foot chase. I, I didn't have a radio, so I was only hearing, because I was off duty, I didn't have a radio, I was only hearing bits and bobs, but my belief was that they've swept over an area, he's come out of an area, he's gone towards a farm, uh, at which point he's been tasered 
and detained and arrested for the uh, heinous crime. I didn't think about being a hero when it was all going on. This guy's killed two people. I'm a police officer. I know what I signed up for. I know what I'm doing. He needs arresting, like uh, someone who's committed a shop theft. The fact of the matter is that the heinous crime, the manhunt that's going on, any help that I can be as a police officer is all I'm thinking about. And it was a team effort as well. It wasn't just me. I was lucky enough to see him, which sparked off a chain of events. Uh, and we managed to get him alive um, and he can serve his sentence thinking about what he's done.